Okay, so now I'm going to speak about another use case, which is Kafka. Um, I don't know if you know that much Kafka. Uh, I'm just maybe, I don't know how many people know Kafka here, but not everybody know Kafka. That was not so far away my case. Uh, so I'm just going to explain quickly what Kafka is and why it's a bit changing the, the way we, we create application. So Kafka is a tool where you have producers, connectors, and essentially where you have producers and consumers. But producers and consumers of what and for and why. So let's try to understand the story of Kafka and why do we have such a tool now? Let's say that you need to aggregate some data in a metric server. Then you have two applications, the front-end server, two different front-end servers, and you need to push some data. This model is very simple and it works perfectly fine and you don't need to reinvent the wheel. That's absolutely fine. You can, you can work with that. But quickly, your application is going to be complex. Very soon, application get complex. And you may find yourself with many applications speaking to the different uh, component. And what you have here is what we call a technical debt. You improve your technical debt. And it's... Uh, it's, I mean, it's, it's a reality. I see many projects that are called micro services, micro architecture services project that finally found themselves in this situation and that make things extremely complicated. And you, and you find some, some interesting framework like, like Istio uh, that try to handle that. But basically you're facing a technical debt. So you try to, to solve this technical debt with a publish and subscribe system. And congratulations, that really helped. So everyone that needs to speak, speak on the, on the system, and everyone that needs to read, read from the same point. And then you really reduce your technical debt. But it's very likely that this situation reproduce. So you find yourself uh, having to reproduce the same thing, the same re-implementation of the pub subsystem. So it's why we implement, uh, it's why some solution and especially one solution, which is Kafka came into the, into the stage and uh, solve this problem, basically solve this problem. So what Kafka is, Kafka is a, pub subsystem, but it also have a very strong storage integration that lets you store all your message for a very long time. And you can have many readers, many writers to what they call topic. So the basic building of Kafka is topic. A topic could be basically a name and it's made of partitions. So partition is the, is the things that make your topic able to scale horizontally. The partition are not living on the same node, on the same storage system. Each partition could be distributed on different nodes and that really improve your throughput inside the topic. The order is always guaranteed inside the partition. And the consumers, the consumer are the one that read from the topic. So the consumer are given inside the group a topic to be read. So in this case, for example, the consumer zero is reading the partition zero, but because we have three consumer for four partition, one of the consumer has to handle two partition. And to improve the resilience and the high availability of the Kafka cluster, we have this notion of uh, replication. So one of the, one of the, of the partition is the leader and the other one is the replicate. So if the leader is failing, then the replicate is, is uh, keeping up and taking the place of the leader. 
So you have a very high availability, highly, uh, uh, highly, highly, highly scalable system. Uh, and that's to, to handle uh, message and to give message to read. And that's what Kafka is. So <clears throat> we're going to set up our environment and we're going to, 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 to see what's the issue when we try to uh, back up these things. So one thing which is very important to understand is now things are changing in the information system and we see more and more customers using Kafka and they come to us and they ask the question, how can we back up and restore Kafka? What's the proper way to do that? So um, to demonstrate that, to demonstrate that, I have built a small lab uh, to set up the environment architecture. And that's what I'm going to show. I'm going to use two, produce, two producers that are going to, to build blogs and one mirror of the first one. And this architecture is very important because that will let us compare the situation from one to another one and let us validate that what we do in terms of backup is good. So we're going to use a different script that I'm going to demonstrate. We create ONF, which is going to create the whole environment, count message per second, which is going to show us that we are producing message, reading the last message, which is going to help us to understand what's going on at the head of a topic and something to compare the topic. So <clears throat> just to show them this tool, read last 10 message is going to read the last 10 message of a topic and compare topic is going to compare the topic between the two clusters. So we're using StreamZ operator, which is helping us to, to manage our environment. So here I'm executing the script, which is going to build my, my two cluster, my two namespace. So I have one namespace, which is called um, Kafka, and the other one, which is Kafka Mirror. And uh, we're going to install everything, the Kafka cluster, the producers, and the mirror maker, which is making the mirroring between the, the two clusters. So that's it. Now I have uh, Kafka mirror and I also have Kafka. And I have my blogs and my items, producer, where I'm producing message. And I'm producing a lot of message. So that's what I'm going to demonstrate very soon. I have my stateful set, which is the representation of my Kafka cluster. So it's six pod of uh, brokers and free zookeepers, so that make a total of 600 gigabytes. So let's count the number of messages that I'm producing, and you can see that actually I'm producing something like 4,000 messages per second in my topic. That's what I'm going to show. Okay. Okay, now let's go to the Kafka mirror. I have the same situation and let's see this situation. I have the mirror maker, which is doing the job of replicating. And we're going to count the number of messages per second also, but this time on the mirror maker part. Okay, that's it. I nearly have 4,000, the same thing. Okay, so now I can just do some tests, some basic tests that I run here, where the goal is just to show uh, that I have exactly the same data on both clusters, and I can compare the data. I have made all the comparison to just check the state of the data. So that's the end of this uh, setup environment, and we are now able to compare things. So now 
I have two strategies. The first strategy of backing up that is the odd snapshot. So the odd snapshot, what I do, I just do use Kasten to take a snapshot of all the data, of all the, of all the storage. So if I take a blob, it's made of three partitions that are evenly, uh, even, uh, evenly distributed. But when I do the snapshot, what's going to happen? The first thing is I probably have one partition which is snapshot at the right time. But then I can have a partition where the segment is not flushed. And I may have another partition, but the snap is starting in late due to the fact that when you start a snapshot, you are not 100% sure that everything is starting in the same time. It's why you may have discrepancy when you are taking this snapshot. And that's what you were speaking about a uh, few minutes ago about application consistency. Here, when I do a hot snapshot, I'm facing a discrepancy. I, I'm facing an application inconsistency, obviously. And when I restore, when I try to restore my snapshot, what happens? I find myself in this situation. And that may be not application consistent, but it could be acceptable depending on the application. So the head may not be, the head of the, of the topic may not be consistent, but the tail of the, of, the, of the topic may be consistent. Depending on the use case, it could be a good choice. So let's have a look very quickly to how we implement this, this quick backup. So I restart all my all my uh, producer because I want to see what's a hot snapshot. I want to experience that. Then I'm just checking that I'm producing a big number of messages per second before taking the, this hot snapshot. And that's what I'm verifying here. Uh, it's, it's okay. I'm going to custom. I take a snapshot. The snapshot is taken. The backup is starting. Backup is made very soon. I'm happy with that. And now I'm going to stop all the producer because I want to check everything. I, I need to stop all the production to compare. So I'm going to stop the producers and I'm going also to stop the mirror maker. So let's do a restore. I just go to the Kafka namespace. I find my restore point and I restore. I restore just the volumes. I don't need to restore the specification. And the specification, I mean, the, the config did not change. So I just exclude them from the restore point and I restore and I click on restore. So that's going to restore my Kafka cluster as it was. The restore is going to start and the restore is starting. So when the restore starts, Kasten is making sure that first all your workloads are stopped. So you see all the brokers are stopping and we are recreating all the PVC. We recreate all the PVC. And when all the PVC are recreated, then we restart the workload. So workload have some difficulties to restart, as you can see. Obviously, the hot snapshots, they don't like that that much. But OK, at the end, it managed to reconcile. And the restore is finished. So now let's have a look to the different uh, partitions. And what you can see is I have some discrepancy. I have some very big difference at the end of the of the partition. And that means 
that what I was showing in the diagram is, is something that I can verify now. So my Kafka cluster is not at the end consistent. It's not at the at the end application consistent. So let's check now the tails. And what I can see is the tail is still consistent. The, the tail is still the same compared to the mirror. So I have a difference at the end and I have a tail which is similar. Okay. So now let's see how can we how can we improve that? How can we do something better in this situation? So what we see, the head is up and consistent, and but the tail is is consistent. So depending on the use case, it could be a good choice because it's it's cheap. But we can imagine something else. Instead of using Kafka Mirror for uh, the comparison, we could use it as a strategy to implement an application consistent backup. And what we do, we implement a blueprint. And what the blueprint do? First thing, it stop mirror maker, which is stopping the production of any message on the test, on, on the target cluster. Then it flush the segment on the disk. It stop the Kafka broker. So we are 100% sure that everything is flush on the disk properly. And then we do the snap of the PVC and we restart the workload and we finally restart Mirror Maker. 